Episode 124 of the Interpretation Station is called to order. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. How is everybody doing on this 27th of April, 2022? This is an episode especially then for my uh, Russian-speaking viewers. And uh, for the, the sake of everyone's sanity, uh, you'll be relieved to know that, okay, we're not, we're not going to be discussing the situation in Ukraine today. We'll leave that for another time. We've done that before. Uh, we're going to discuss something completely different. Uh, and it's also... Uh, in conjunction, I'm, I'm sort of killing two birds with one stone today. So on the one hand, we're going to have an episode, a new episode for, the, for you Russian guys out there, you Russian speakers. And also I'm doing it for my own benefit because at my work, over the course of the year, I have to do what are called self-evaluations. I have to basically assess my own performance of uh, things I've done at work. And so that's 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 the other bird that I'll be killing in this because I'll be taking a uh, I'm taking a, a statement from a meeting that I did uh, at the end of last. This is actually from the end of last year, and I'll be uh, evaluating my uh, my own performance. And um, now the meeting I'm taking it from, it's from the uh, Convention Against Torture, the CAT, as it's known by its acronym. And the meeting was, it was the country of Kyrgyzstan, who was appearing before the committee to basically tell the committee members what they had done over the course of the pre previous reporting cycle to implement the provisions of the Convention Against Torture. And then it's down, then the committee members after that, you know, would then you have a Q&A, the committee members quiz the members of the delegation. It was a big delegation. Uh, they sent their just, the deputy justice minister. I'll give you some of the, they had the perm rep, permanent representative at the UN, at, in, uh, the UN in Geneva. They had their deputy health care minister, uh, people from the Supreme Court. Uh, they had people from the office of the prosecutor and from uh, the Interior Ministry Internal Investigations. Ooh, who else do we have here? Yeah, they they had some fairly, in, you know, they had some fairly important, pretty important people at this uh, at this hearing. Now, the format these meetings take, they, they run over the course of two days, actually, and basically have the head of delegation who will give, like, the introductory statement, which is what we're going to be doing, okay? And then after that, as I say, the committee members start asking. The, each country has a rapporteur, a country rapporteur, who is the main sort of person to lead the, the Q&A. And uh, so he'll present his report after the, uh, after the country's spoken after the state party has spoken. Then you'll have other committee members chipping in with their questions. And they'll basically break up the, um, the review uh, in, art, in sort of clusters of articles. So the CAT has, I don't know, maybe 25 or 30 articles, and they'll, do, they'll first do articles 1 to 6, and then 7 to 12, etc. And it goes, it's over two days. Each meeting is three hours long. So we're talking a six-hour meeting. And it's tough. It's hard work uh, if, you're, if you're in it. There's a lot of Russian. There's a lot of work, obviously, a lot of uh, information to be interpreted from Russian into English. It's a real marathon, and it, what's good about it, it really forces you to draw on all the skills at your disposal in terms of taking shortcuts, in leaving stuff out that's redundant. Okay, that's really what the focus is. Because if you don't do that, if you're just constantly on top of the speaker the whole time trying to get every single word, you're going to be dead and buried within you know within your within your second shift so it's a, it's a really good thing to practice it's pretty specific as well some of the stuff that you're going to we're going to be hearing it's very subject specific it's stuff that you're not so much likely to hear in the more general political meetings where there's more sort of you know more blah blah it's more general stuff it's a bit easier to wing it here it's very sort of nuts and bolts you'll get a lot of statistics coming at you how many arrests how many investigations have been opened how many guilty verdicts 
how many people are there in the remand centers? How many people are there in the regular detention centers? Lots of figures, as I say, to practice. And there you've got to be careful. You know, you, you don't, you want to, you want to get be, with the numbers, you want to get them be close, but you don't have to get the exact, if it's like 4,786, you know, you can probably just get away with saying 4,700, you know, that the extra load on your brain trying to get that extra 86, for example, you might get it in that one go, but then you'll lose something else that comes after. So it's a, it's, it's really a marathon, these kinds of meetings. And uh, if you really want to take your interpreting uh, to the next uh, level, it's an ec it's, it's excellent thing to, to listen to and practice. Now, un I mean, unfortunately, generally, you'll only get the introductory statement. So in terms of, you know, tallying what you did to a transcript, it's quite tricky because generally it's only the introductory statement that you have to go on. Uh, but nevertheless, you know, it's, you can, it's still just good just to try and follow it along, try and see how much of it you can do. So as I say, we're going to do uh, the, the introductory uh, statement, a, a chunk of it, because I think it was about um, it was six pages long here. I think it was like 15 to 20 minutes in length. So the segment I'm going to focus on is about 10 minutes in length. So uh, I suggest, again, what I, su I suggest is that to get to really get the full experience, the full tr UN treaty body experience, is I'm going to leave a link in the description box with um, a link to the uh, the original audio. I'm also going to leave a link. You want to have a bit of background knowledge, okay? I suggest you go and perhaps read a bit of the Convention Against Torture. Um, it's not that long, you know, and, and you'll start to see what sort of uh, what the buzz phrases are and so on. Have a, have a read through of the uh, the convention as as your background reading, and then give it a try. Give the actual statement a try. Record yourself, and then watch episode one hundred twenty four of the Interpretation Station, and see if the tips and uh, ideas I give you in the next hour or so are of any value to you. So uh, let's see how it goes, eh? So I mean, I, I, you'll see, I, I, got, I received this text. I had about maybe five minutes to prepare this, five, ten minutes to prepare it. So I make a few mistakes, okay? And I'll be highlighting those mistakes, don't worry. Fear not. But uh, it's, it's a very good text. You'll learn a lot, a lot of useful uh, expressions from it. Okay, so without any further ado, let's, uh, the next voice you'll hear, you'll have the... Um, the uh, the transcript up, up on the screen, and you'll hear my voice interpreting. Okay, so you should now see the uh, the text, the scrap transcript up on the screen. So as you can see, a statement by the Deputy Justice Minister, Mr. Smanaliev, meeting of the Committee Against Torture as part of consideration of the third periodic report of Kyrgyzstan on implementation of the Convention Against Torture and other cruel inhuman and degrading treatment and punishment in Nakazanya. And as you can tell, it's that name of that convention, it's quite a mouthful. I think you may even notice the slight hesitancy myself when I was trying to give it the full name. So as a general rule, when you've got something like this, when you've got such a specific vocabulary, like the name of a convention like this, it's always a good idea just to have it out written on a piece of paper in front of you so that you can just, you know, any time the uh, delegation mentions, you know, gives a long, gives it its like full name or refers to, or more likely refers <coughs> to wording perhaps in his own country's legislation to do, do with that, you can just sort of reel it off reading it in front of you, okay? So that's really, with a, with especially as I say, with a convention of that length. Uh, okay, so as I say here on this first page, it's just basically the head of delegation introducing all his colleagues. You will see various notes that I made at the time. So we're going to basically start it from the bottom of the first page. До перехода к обсуждению третьего периодического доклада. So this is what I said. Before discussing the third periodic report, let me 
please inform you of the current internal political situation in the country and the most important latest changes that haven't been reflected in the third national report. A very quick thing I'm going to point out here. So I think that was perfect, being modest here. Okay, so he actually said, Dokladie Kyrgyzskoy Respubliki. Okay. Now, I want you to focus on thinking intuitively during a statement like this. Okay, so this is Kyrgyzstan appearing before the Committee Against Torture, okay? And they're here to account for, for what that their country, Kyrgyzstan, has done uh, to comply with the provisions. So we know it's going to be about Kyrgyzstan. There's no need for us to repeat, you know, to say the Kyrgyz Republic or Kyrgyzstan, it's a bit of a mouthful, the Kyrgyz, okay? It's a bit of a mouthful. So we, we know it's about Kyrgyzstan. It's not going to be about anyone else unless the guy specifically says it is. So let's just take it for granted that it's going to be about Kyrgyzstan. We can say in our third national report, okay? Think intuitively. In April this year, at a nationwide referendum, there was the adoption of a new constitution of the country, which was the result of a new policy course taken by the country in October 2020. Okay, so the, the thing to notice here is I played so, okay, at the national referendum, Bila Priniata. Now, in English, we would report, if I was, you know, if, uh, the most likely way we'd express this in English would be in April this year at a national referendum, uh, a new version of the constitution was adopted. But I'm under pressure, okay? I know this is going to be a long statement, okay? I just want to save myself. I like to process these words, get them out of the way as soon as the speaker pretty much says them, okay? So I've gone here, Bila Priniata, there was the adoption. I could have said we adopted. You could say we adopted, but there's always that risk if you go with the we that it's not going to be we, that it's going to be something else, okay? Uh, we adopted sounds a bit better than <coughs> there was the adoption, but with the there was the adoption, you're playing completely safe. There's nothing that can go wrong, okay? Because if it's by some other country, there was the adoption of a new uh, version of the constitution by Afghanistan, say, whatever. So if you, do the, if you go with the there, well, the there was route, it's completely neutral and it's completely safe. The we is very sounds very good, big sounds natural. Okay, there's always that little risk with the we that it might suddenly um, backfire on you. So, okay, that's what I wanted you to note from there. Uh, Nova, of course, I said a po new policy course t adopted by the country. Just note that they all, the Russians talk a lot about course, right? In that respect, the current situation in our country is typified by a determination to comprehensively change all spheres of public life for the better. A couple of uh, vocab um, comments to make. Uh, so, characterizuits, I said typified, often say, you can say characterize as well, but typify is a good synonym. And that's, then these, these are crucial words, I think, to get right when you're going from Russian into English. It's very important, really. I, I'm a real stickler. When it comes to Russian, interpreting from Russian to English is just to get those, the key words properly rendered. In Russian, compared to French or Spanish, there's a lot less of verbal flourishes, I think, in Russian. It's my impression. You know, the, the, in, in French and Spanish, there's a lot of things that you can sort of leave out. These sort of, as I say, these rhetorical flourishes. Whereas Russian speakers, by and large, you know, they, they want to say a specific thing and they don't really beat about the bush as much as perhaps French and, and Spanish speakers. And so with the words like this, I just want to be getting them, you know, like for likes. And that's silliness, determination. Siesterone, okay, comprehensive. Siesterone, I always just go for comprehensive. Preobrazovania, I think I said changes. Maybe it's a, you want some like transformations or reforms, positive reforms of all spheres of public life. At the same time, we should point out that our earlier international commitments including on complying with the provisions of the UN Convention Against Torture, 
remain sacrosanct and fundamentally important benchmarks on the path towards the country's further democratic development. Let me. Okay, so here, notice I just said our earlier international commitment. So I actually left out the perignate here because if you've got an international commitment, it's sort of implicit that you've adopted it. Okay, think intuitively. You could have, I could have said maybe the earlier adopted international commitments or the, the commitments we earlier adopt, we, that we adopted earlier. But again, that's a bit of an extra load on the brain. Again, with this kind of thing, I'm just looking to edit out everything that's slightly um, superfluous. Uh, then, okay, okay, you can see there I said sacrosanct. Maybe you could have just said our earlier commitments still stand, still very much stand, and are fundamentally important. Again, orientir is one of these words I'm a bit of a pedant on, a stickler. You know, I like benchmarks or, or yardsticks. Those are my sort of two go-to solutions. Point out that Article 56 of the Constitution contains a norm which reads that no one may be subjected to torture and other cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment. Okay, so there you go. See, he reads out here that the wording from the Kyrgyz constitution, which contains that uh, exact same wording. Now, he, you know, if he's if, it, even if he was just referring to the Convention Against Torture and gave that whole thing, I'd probably I would I would just say the cat, okay. But because he's directly quoting from his own constitution, you you need to give it the full wording. That's why I say it's very useful to have it written out in front of you on a piece of paper. Uh, what else do I want to put here? Notice again, I left out Kyrgyz Republic. I just said Article 56, the Constitution. Pedusmatrivat norm. I said contains a norm. You know, pedusmatrivat, I tend to you know, go with provide for, tends to be my, again, my go to generic um, solution for pedusmatrivat. Because again, you can't really go wrong with with provide for because with you say provide for it can provide for something specific like a standard a, a, you know a, a text or it can provide or more abstract or, or it can provide for something more abstract like it can provide for the protection of human rights generally so provide for just sets you up nicely and it doesn't matter whether the thing that's being provided for is a specific concrete thing like a text or if it's a more abstract uh, notion this norm is not just declarative oh by the way norma there's some people are hesitant i think i get the impression even i'm sometimes say norma can i say norm you can i norm or standard torture is a crime the commission of torture and other forms of uh, cruel inhuman Treatment or punishment carry criminal liability. Savarshinya Pitak. So I said the commission of torture. Another good word for savarshinya is perpetration. Okay, perpetration of torture. Frichot ugalovnyu atvietsvina. So this is again one of these expressions that it's really, you just need to keep practicing, okay? It's just the more exposure you get to these kinds of meetings, because these expressions come up all the time. You know, this, this is all the context of the police, the breaking the law and that sort of thing. And this is obviously something that these delegates are going to refer to a lot. So I said carries criminal liability. What else could you see? Because it is criminally punishable, is a criminally punishable act. Find some wording that you're comfortable with, okay? Therefore, we developed and adopted a new wording for the codes in the sphere of criminal procedure. Okay, so here I weed it, okay? We developed and adopted. So th there are three codes, the criminal code, the criminal procedure code, and the criminal administrative code, as well as the code on uh, misdemeanors. Okay, so I make a mistake here, actually. This is an important. Ugalovna, okay, whenever you hear Ugalovna, just go with criminal. Here, criminal. So criminal, criminal procedure. Now, Ugalovna is actually refers to everything to do with prisons, the criminal correctional code. Remember that word. Anything to do with prisons, corrections. Remember another synonym, penitentiary. It's good to have corrections and penitentiary. They'll, 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 help, they'll help you a lot. So what I actually should have said here was the criminal corrections code, the code that governs everything that 
happens in basically in, uh, in detention facilities. And I said, okay, pravonarushenich misdemeanors. That's okay. Maybe offenses would have been better, but I think misdemeanors is okay. When crafting the criminal code, we took into account the chief requirements of the Convention Against Torture, the CAT, and also proposals from civil society and NGOs. Okay, so here again, I weed it. We, we, I weed it. We took into account the main requirements. And so I said here, the Convention Against Torture, I gave, I gave it the full name and then said the CAT. So when I say the CAT, I'm basically signaling to the committee members and whoever else is listening that, look, from now on, I'm going to just be calling it the CAT. I want to make it clear that the new wording of the criminal code for the crime of torture and depending on the qualification of the act committed uh, an individual found guilty of torture can face a prison sentence of from 5 to 12 years under article 137 of the criminal code whereas before that crime carried a sentence of up to 10 years. So at this point I'm thinking, thank goodness I had the text, had a little bit of, the little bit of opportunity to prepare it. So basically yeah, this bit, uh, I think basically what he's saying is, you know, for the crime of torture, depending on what category, because you'll find that there are different categories in Kyrgyzstan of torture. Uh, okay, and then th something like this, again, it's crucial that you find some wording that you're comfortable with. So I said, I think, you know, anyone found guilty of torture could face a prison term of 5 to 12 years. Okay, prison sentence, a prison term. Uh, now, if you want to take, for example, this uh, expression, lishinis svobody, they use it all the time, okay? Uh, you, if you want to higher register, a custodial sentence. That sounds really nice. That's really impressive. Car you know, uh, someone found guilty of torture uh, could face a custodial sentence of 5 to 12 years. So I'm told also that, you, that um, any Americans among you, uh, that you, talk, you, can, you say incarceration can carry a term of incarceration of 5 to 12 years. That's, that's quite nice. Bit American sounding, but I'll give you it. Uh, whereas before it carried a sentence of 10 years. So again, just find, just, you always want to practice just saying that sort of sentence over again, just so, again, I say this all the time, so that you're comfortable with that expression, with those words. Furthermore, uh, the, a new category has been introduced, which is torture of children. Okay, so here we go. So, qualification. So a new category. This is, as I say, it's not so. There is, it's not just one crime of torture. There's different, as I say, categories of it. To implement the requirements of the CAT, torture has been taken from Section Nine of, of being official misconduct in the Criminal Code. That has been moved to Section Six which is uh, crimes against the person. Okay, this is again, I'm, th I'm thinking, thank God again I have the text here. This would be really hard to do without it. Um, now, you'll see my notes here. I've put here uh, uh, official misconduct. Now, in, ret in hindsight, I I'm not too happy with that solution. I think maybe I should have said just administrative crimes. I think just administrative crimes. So it's been moved from section 6 to section, sec, from section 9 to section 6. So I went for crimes against the person. So I noticed that the, the UN, they do talk about the person a lot in a lot of these you know, human rights conventions. Um, the, the, the sanctity of whatever the human person. So I thought that sort of sounded quite convincing. So I'm fairly pleased with that solution. Of the criminal code. In so, in so doing, we have extended the scope of individuals subject to prosecution for perpetration of such a crime. <coughs> okay, I'm I said subject to prosecution. So I'm going to come back to Podlijashi 
in one minute when I do the next sentence. Privlicienie kat vietsvinest. Okay, just go with prosecution for that. Okay, uh, for commission for perpetration of this crime. Now, those found guilty of torture are not eligible for am any amnesty. Okay, now, what I want to say here is in hindsight, perhaps the best solution for Podlijashi would have been liable. Okay, we expanded the scope of individuals, subjecto, uh, uh, liable for prosecution for perpetration of this act. Now, what I want you to remember, I want the way to remember liable, I want you to remember it in a package together with its antonym. Okay, and its antonym is eligible. And I say that because usually when you say it's, you're liable for something, it tends to be for something bad. Okay, you're liable for prosecution, you're liable for, for a fine. It's, it's usually always something bad. Okay, now if it's something good, it's not that you're liable for it. You tend to be eligible for it. Usually, when you say that you're eligible for something, eligible for parole, you're eligible for a tax exemption, it tends to be good stuff. Okay, so and so here he says, okay, uh, individuals found guilty of torture, convicted of torture, found guilty of torture, are not eligible for an amnesty. Okay, so that you know, if there, there was an amnesty, that that would be a good thing, right? So remember, liable and eligible together as a little pa package of antonyms. If it's bad stuff, liable, if it's good stuff, eligible. An amnesty, I said amnesty, I think you could, you could say pardon as well. For any uh, parole, they're not eligible to invoke a uh, state of statute of limitations, nor is that cli crime eligible for out of court settlement. Okay, this is tough. Now you can tell I'm struggling a little bit, can't you? Yeah, условно досрочно освобождение от наказания. Here it's just good to have a sort of um, basic knowledge of some of these legal instruments, okay? So this is, I said parole. I mean, it's literally, it's, you know, uh, early release from punishment, if you were to do it every, every, you know, every word. But it's useful just to have a basic knowledge of these concepts because with one word, you can more or less cover all these five words in the Russian. So they're not eligible for parole. This is a very important expression uh, in sort of legal legalese jargon. Statute of limitations, SOL. It gets invoked all the time all of the time in the treaty bodies. And the idea is here that they're not eligible for, you know, they're not eligible for charges to be dropped on the basis of the expiry of statute of limitations. So one thing they always argue is, you know, if the crime happened long ago, 20 years ago, they'll, they'll say, oh, well, the statute of limitations has expired, and then the person isn't liable for prosecution anymore. Notice the words I'm just choosing, by the way, as I speak to you. He's not liable for prosecution. So the point that the Kyrgyzstan guy is making here is that it doesn't matter how long ago the crime took place, the accused cannot invoke the expiry of statute of limitations. So remember that as a little package, expiry of statute of limitations. And this last bit again, so that it can't basically, the, the crime, the case can't be terminated just on the basis of reaching uh, an agreement between the parties okay reconciliation primirinia staron okay so maybe you go for that literally maybe you said talk about uh is not subject to termination due to reconciliation of the parties now what is that what is the event essentially talking about what would we call that in english we would call that an out of court settlement so again just remember these um expressions now, in view of the comments of civil society on the unjustified protraction of investigation into acts of torture by investigators for the state's National Security Committee, because of that, the new code provides for an alternative protocol. Okay, so again, I, uh, I should... At this point, I hadn't had that much experience of doing these big 
presentations by Russian speaking countries of this. I'm still at this point still finding my way a bit with the vocab. This was at the end of last year. Uh, I said the, the unjustified protraction. I mean delays, I guess, delays into investigating. Now for fact of I think you for fact of you want a nice generic go to word. I think the best um most generic word is maybe um, cases. I said acts, I think, investigating acts of torture, but I think or sometimes it's fact, evidence of something. I, I think if you just say cases, this is the best solution here, investigating cases of torture by investigators from the, the state security. Um, yeah. And then, oh, now this word here, pad sliedstvinist. So I actually put here a protocol. I wasn't certain about it. So again, you know, if you're not certain about something, one approach is you just take a sort of vague word, a sort of uh, a generic word like protocol. I mean, what I said, it sounds nice to the speaker, right? It provides for an alternative protocol. You know, it's not wrong, is it? Now, what Padslezvinas actually means for the non-native Russian speakers of you is basically who has jurisdiction to investigate the crime. So as you'll see, there's lots of different bodies competing. There's like the office of the prosecutor, I guess there's the regular police, maybe the military police, I don't know. And it's basically the in, who has uh, investigational jurisdiction. Okay, who, which is the body responsible for conducting the investigation. This for me, it's sometimes, you know, at least for us you, people from the UK, we just think, okay, the crime's being committed. Who's going to investigate the crime? It's going to be the police, isn't it? Just the police. Who else could there be? But obviously there are lots of other sort of uh, bodies involved, certainly here in Kyrgyzstan. And so it's all about which one of those bodies, which one of those entities has the investigative jurisdiction. It's a mouthful, I know, but there you go. Uh, that means that since the first of De starting first December this year uh, investigators from the procurator's office together with investigators from the national security bodies are authorized to investigate offenses linked to torture getting a bit hesitant here my delivery is starting to break up a little bit uh try and not try not to say uh and i said the procurator Organ of Procurator of the Prosecutor. If you don't know, if you're not from Scotland, interesting enough, if you ever have to interpret a text, something by, to do with Scotland, say the law in Scotland, and they talk about the prosecutor. Uh, and, and in Scotland, the main prosecutor is called the Procurator Fiscal. That's like the equivalent of the Prosecutor General or whatever, the Office of the Procurator. They call it Procurator Fiscal. But here we're talking Kyrgyzstan, not Scotland, so I should have just said investigators from the Organ of Procuratura, the Office of the Prosecutor. Okay, so I said authorized to investigate or are mandated. That's a good alternative to authorized. Sounds very professional as well. They're mandated to do this. In the context of reforms to the system for combating torture we should note that the kyrgyzstan interior ministry as of 6 november 2014 created a specialized office okay a couple of things you note how i left out pravadimi again if, if there's been a reform it sort of goes without saying that it's been carried out, so I just said, in the context of reforms to uh, combating torture, protivadisvya, plitkam, combating. Again, I'm just thinking intuitively here. I don't need to waste my time saying that were carried reforms that were carried out. I mean, that's just four unnecessary, um, redundant syllables that could be better used elsewhere, right? Uh, and then notice here, okay, so I, I often will do this. I'll just, when there's a V, I'll often make whatever it is, the locative, in this case, the structuria, uh, I'll make it the subject of the sentence. I mean, again, it's easier here. But I know what's coming after. I know what, you know, you have the verb, your source, and I basically say that the, the interior ministry or the bodies of the interior ministry created a specialized office 
Uh, Potras de Lienia, that's a good safe word to go from. Just to say office, okay, that's the easiest. You could maybe say a desk, okay, if you want to get that notion that it's maybe a subdivision of something higher. Maybe you can say a, a desk. That's what they have, for example, in media outlets. They, they have, you know, the Middle East desk or they have the the, the business desk. So maybe, maybe that's a, just a suggestion for something different. Office on guaranteeing state protection, which is responsible for ensuring security for participants in criminal proceedings, including for the victims of torture. And as for Upravienia, now always go for office there. That's always office. So, I mean, you've got the Upravienia, Verhovnovo Kamisara Pa Pravam Chilavieka, the at OE, the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. That's, you know, that's very much closely linked to my work generally. Uve Kapiche, Upravienia, Verhovnovo Kamisara Pa Dialam Piesensum, UNHCR, the Office of the High Commissioner um, you know, on, on, on Refugees. So, anyway, yeah, Upravienia. Always go with office. And Suda Proizvodstva. This is gonna, a word that's going to come up all the time in these kinds of meetings. Okay, so whenever you hear something like that, like the Proizvodstva, proceedings tends to be your safest option. So I said criminal proceedings. Moreover, the health ministry provides free of charge medical psychological assistance to victims of torture so notice again i dropped kyrgyzstan i just i think you can almost hear me taking that breath moreover the health ministry for victims of torture gives them free medical assistance we you know unless it's specifically to do with another country then everyone can just assume that it is going to be the kyrgyzstan health ministry that the speaker is talking about in particular i want to stress that work on combating torture is conducted not just by law enforcement but also by the National Centre for Prevention of Torture, by the Ombudsman and also by NGOs whose work has been effective and independent. Okay, a couple of vocabulary things to note here. Pravo hranitilnami organami. I just said law enforcement. I didn't even bother with the, the organami. I didn't say law enforcement bodies or organs. Because, I mean, I think when you, you know, you just talk about what, what's law enforcement done about this? You know, that's what they say on the news. They never really specify the organs. So, you know, just say, you know, it's conducted not just by law enforcement, but by you know, the National Center. I dropped, so I dropped organami, you see. I dropped that. And I dropped Institutum Ombuds, so I just said the Ombudsman. I didn't bother with the Institute, you know, you just say the Ombudsman. And then he also, he gave the full, you know, Nepravitisve Organizatsi. NGOs, that's a no-brainer. Just, just don't even bother giving, ever, everyone knows what NGOs are. You don't need to say non-governmental organizations. Look at me, how many syllables that is. Non-governmental organizations. Ten syllables you're just wasting just by saying the full name of that. <laughs> don't bother, NGOs. Overall, the procurator together with representatives of the Ombudsman and the National Torture Prevention Centre carried out 677... OK, I'll just stop it there in mid-sentence. I don't know why I keep saying procurator. Could that have been the official wording? I don't know. Prosecutor. Now, um, I always, as I say, stress the importance of thinking uh, intuitively. Here I fail to think intuitively. Why do I say that? OK, so... Because he gave the full name again. He said the National Center for Predupreždjenje Pitak. I mean, look, he's, he's already said it in the previous sentence. He already meant, referred to it. I should just have said here, the prosecutor together with representatives of the Ombudsman at the National Center carried out. So just forget the National Center on the Prevention of Torture because he's already just mentioned the, the full name of it in the previous sentence. It's obviously going to be about that same National Center. So there I failed to think. I failed to follow my own uh, advice. Joint spot checks 
in detention centers and remand facilities. Of these, 488 <coughs> were to detention centers. Okay, this is tricky. Uh, okay, so you'll see here, I put in spot checks. Now, that's not quite the right... Uh, the quite the right expression what i wanted here i believe the actual expression that's used is unannounced visits um you know if you don't know the exact um, expression then you, you you try and find something close maybe i could have said snap visits um but yeah so unannounced visits i think okay spot checks is okay uh now this is an important idea okay so the mr agranichenia svobody in mr lichenia svobody so he draws a distinction right between the two kinds of uh detention center now you want to have a generic expression that covers all detention facilities um which are mr lichenia svobody now the one, the generic solution I use is like a detention center or detention facilities. For me, that that covers everything. Now, obviously, that covers doesn't matter whether it's regular prisons, I don't know, mental health facilities, or remand centers, pretrial detention facilities, whatever. That that the, the idea of detention centers is sort of as a catch-all that covers pretty much everything. Now, obviously, these mistah agranicinius for body are slightly different because why? Because why? Otherwise, you wouldn't be um, talking about them separately. Now, I've had actually had a I have had a look around a, on to see if I could find an exact uh, translation for mistah agranicinius for body. I haven't actually found anything. Specific specific um so if anyone anyone watching if, if you've got a suggestion do you know what the exact um rendering into english of a mr agranicinius for body is as opposed to a mr lichinius for body so again my inkling is that lichinius for body tends to be the more general uh center the detention center so i think at the time i think i said i called it a remand center to distinguish between the two. But if any of you guys out there do have a better idea than me, if there's anyone from Kyrgyzstan watching, hell, put, put it in the, the comments below what you would what you would say here. Uh, and also another word that's not actually mentioned here, but there's a word really worth knowing that comes up a lot in meetings and what to do with it. Isoliator. So I know isoliator, that that is a uh, remand center. A remand center being where someone is placed when they've just been arrested so they haven't yet been charged or found guilty yet they've just been arrested and they're obviously not going to get put in straight away with the uh the no they're not going to get put straight away into a high security prison they're going to be kept in a sort of holding facility a, a remand center let's continue furthermore the procurator without the participation of the national human rights institutes carried out <coughs> spot checks in administrative administrative facilities of the interior ministry in prisons as well as in closed institutions so i'm thinking actually maybe the, the maybe their report maybe their report did actually refer to their main prosecutor as the procurator so maybe that's why i keep saying procurator nationalnych pravozaschitnych institutov this is uh uh, an institution that is going to get mentioned frequently in these kinds of meetings, the National Human Rights Institution, often referred to as the NHRI. It's a very useful acronym. And, okay, so they, again, I said, I talked about prisons, closed institutions. Uh, prison at the time, I was just going for prison as my sort of generic word during that at the time. I think, as I say, that was six months ago, whatever it was, I think detention center now is my favorite generic go-to word for that kind of place. Between 2012 and 2020, there were 34,307 spot checks carried out. And during the first nine months of 2021, we had 2,176. 
By the way, I'm obviously I'm getting these numbers spot on because it's uh, as I say, I had the text in front of me, so I didn't have to uh, employ any coping strategies. I could just read the number off the sheet. Chairman, committee members, let me stress that every complaint or report of torture or other cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment and punishment is considered independent of a gender, age, race, nationality and sexual orientation. It's the Okay, so uh, Zayev Yenius, I said every complaint of torture. I think perhaps in hindsight, the best solution for that is an allegation of torture. Is probably the one we'd most like to use in, in English. Every allegation of torture and other cruel, inhuman, inhuman degrading. So again, notice here, you have to really get every single one of those words right. Because again, he's not, just, he's not referring specifically to the convention here he's just saying that every act all of these acts and so here really helps again if you just have that in front of you the full name of the the convention so you can just uh read it off without having to uh stress out too much studied objectively looking at these individual circumstances in each case and each case is uh, each complaint is considered thoroughly. To yeah, is is ledovni zloznih v njom obstajatelstvo. Maybe I could have said judging each case on its merits. That's a good expression in English to have. You know, you don't just do it one size fits all, as they like to say at the UN. You judge each, judge each case on its own merits. Uh, Zajavitje, uh, the uh, the complaining in in. UK law, we talk about the complainant. I guess in the US, you talk about the plaintiff. Plaintiff, right? I think either or works here. Again, and the sisteron of sisteron. I think I said thoroughly here. So thoroughly, comprehensively, whatever. Sure, constitutional guarantees for the prohibition of the use of torture and other inhuman, cruel, or degrade, degrading forms of treatment and punishment. We introduced a norm in the Criminal Procedure Code on mandatory registration and pre-trial procedure for each complaint of crimes committed or in the process of being committed. Okay, tricky sentences. Uh, okay, again, he reads out the whole thing, doesn't he? Без человечных жестоких унижающих достоинств. And then, so I, I read it here. Vidina norma. So I just said we introduced. Maybe I could have said there was there was the introduction of a norm in the code. Обязательно регистрации mandatory registration of pre-trial. I think I said procedure for praise here. Again, proceedings, I think, is a little bit better. Pre-trial proceedings for each allegation of a crime committed or being planned. is the idea. It's under preparation or being planned. At the same time, there has been digitalization, electronic digitalization, and registration of all complaints in a single register of uh, crimes and misdemeanors. This. Okay, so I went with so provoditsa here. I went with the there was option, rather as opposed to we said there there was the digitalization of electronic was it record keeping. Uh, I seem to like misdemeanors seems to have been my word of the day here. I think, again, offences is perhaps. Often, it, I think they talk more about crimes and offences. The, the distinction is between drawn between those two as opposed to misdemeanors. Misdemeanors is okay. I mean, it's allowed us to <coughs> speed up uh, processing time. Oh, now you see... You can hear my get me ner getting nervous here, including when it comes to offences involving torture. Oh, you, you can sense the the stress in my voice, okay? Because I don't know, I didn't at the time really know what this meant, okay? So I said speeding up processing times. So I started coughing, fake coughs. Yeah, that's a sort of, for me, that's a giveaway that I'm not entirely certain what I'm saying. Um, 
what I should have said here, I should have just played it very safe. I'm kind of putting words into the guy's mouth by saying that. I should have just processed each word as it came and said, enabled us to reduce the latency of the crime. Now, what does that actually mean? Uh, that, that, I mean, that is a pretty, it basically means that in the past, uh, these kind of allegations of torture were sort of swept under the carpet. There wasn't really much talk about them. So the idea now is that they're trying to uh, be a bit more proactive in addressing them. So, uh, and if you just say it enables us to reduce the latency of the crime, you know, that, that's fine. That's what he's, you know, you're, you're giving a word for word pr um, processing of what the speaker is saying. And you, you're not wrong. Let the listener, let the listener uh, draw his own conclusions. Because what you've said is, is perfectly, if you're not certain, as I say, if you don't, don't put words into the speaker's mouth. Don't take leaps where you could be really making a bad contrasens. This was a bit of a contrasens, what I said. I should just have just taken each word uh, on its own merits. Besides this, individuals subjected to torture can petition the competent authorities. They can write to them, uh, either the letter, or they can also submit a petition remotely. They can submit the petition either in person or they can submit it by post, fax or by email. Uh, one thing to note, here, a couple of things to note here, actually. Abratitsov kompetentnie or organi. Now, since then, so you have this, this is often used, you know, in Russian, abratitsa to somebody, whatever it may be. In this case, it's sapismenim zayavienim, or sprospem, something it could be. There's lots of things you can obratitsa somebody with, all right? Now, the problem is, in English, what we you tend to say is we tend to have the verb followed by the object, okay? You know, we, we would say we would write to the competent authorities or we would request the current authorities. And so what you want is with this obratitsa is to find a sort of, again, a generic word that leaves your options open after you mention the object of the sentence. So what I've started to use, I used to use petition. I think I said, did I say here? Or they can also submit a petition remotely. So yeah, I talk about petitions. Now, that's a bit specific because a petition is always al almost always going to be something in writing. Now, okay, in this occasion, it is something in writing. Okay, but if you just say approach, they can approach the competent authorities with a written statement. Okay, because um, also, you know, what if it had been uh, just a verbal something verbal that wasn't on paper? Okay. Um, then you can't really petition the local authorities with a request. The idea of petition, for example, um, sort of implies that it's something written. So if you just say approach, you're being very general, and it just leaves your leaves your options open. You can just approach the object, followed by the object, the competent or organi, the competent authorities, with whatever it happens to be. And I have to thank Erin Ray for that solution that she gave me. For that, Erin is someone that we've uh, I've coached at the UN before, and it was her idea, and I, I think it's a really good uh, solution. So, nice one, Erin. Vyavachnom Pariadke, anonymously. So, I didn't know this. I skipped this bit because I didn't have time to look it up. It was a long statement, you know, didn't have a chance to, to go through it all. So, Vyavachnom Pariadke is anonymously. At least in this instance, okay, that's the idea. He's saying basically they, they can just submit this written statement without identifying themselves. That's the idea. <clears throat> Courts, starting from when torture was criminalized in the period between 2012 to the first six months of 2021, pursuant to court cases considered by the courts of cases of torture found 18 officials guilty okay this is a tough uh, tough paragraph here i'll just break it up into 
to yeah pa rezultatom rasmotrenih sudami ugolovnih dia i said uh, pursuant to pa rezultatom or as per criminal cases considered by the courts that's a good again with pa rezultatom you never quite know where it's going to go you know if you see here as a result of it's not quite the same in english as, as a result of cases it's you know based on what those the outcomes of those cases were which is why i say pursuant again again these are very generic solutions that sort of leave your options open pursuant to the uh cases considered or as per the cases considered but recently the norm you know, so i found 18 uh officials guilty or uh convicted 18 dozens i would just say officials all right but again but he's not even normally found found guilty is probably your, your best bet 14 of those were inter interior ministry personnel four were from the corrections department and 12 of the individuals found guilty were given prison sentences okay so again you can hear my voice my delivery here is I'm, I'm struggling it's it's, it's stressful uh, I, I got it right here so ispanini la casania so uh, corrections right so again just to repeat corrections uh, you I could, have, I, I could have I said here what four corrections staff I could have said four penitentiary staff as I say those are two good synonyms to have and uh, as I say, 12 of them basically received custodial sentences. I think what I say were sent to prison. I mean, that's a very sort of low register way of saying, very eh, colloquial, just everyday way of saying it. It's good to cover both, to cover the full range of registers, to have an option for, for each, for the bottom of the range and top of the range. Custodial sentences. Digitalization has also taken place within the state service, state correction service. Currently, at the monitoring centre and analysis of that department, nine hundred and three CT CCTV cameras have been set up. This is a very difficult paragraph coming up here. I think we were talking about, I think they called it the Gassine. I think later on in the meeting we would just refer to this uh, state service for um, the, the state correctional service, basically, the state penitentiary service that they were just referring to as Gassine. So, Ustanovli Divitsot Tri Kamiri Sligenius, I put here, as you can see, CC. TV. You, I could have said another alternative, maybe surveillance cameras. That's a very important word to have, okay? So the idea of surveillance. It's very topical in this brave new world, in this day and age that we live in, the idea of, you know, surveillance of the population. Uh, so, yeah, remember that word, surveillance. Also, in the state, in the correctional service administrative building, there is a system of video surveillance, including 34 cameras. And in the centre of uh, services to the population and for receiving citizens in hospitals and clinics under the auspices of the corrections services, eight cameras have been set up. Again, thank God I had the text. Some of these things are very difficult. Okay, I did get the, the surveillance, right? And then trying to describe, put into English, some of these um, institutions. Centra Kazania Uslug Naseljenju i Prioma uh Grajdan. it's like what is it the public reception center maybe another uh concept that came to me was like a citizens advice bureau you know that's where i guess citizens advice bureau that's where people go to get information on administrative matters so maybe you know it's again it's good to have the sort of general um, concept in your head that you know like i've seen before about parole and uh, out of court settlements and things like that. These things that you can just sort of drop in if you're really struggling to get the exact name of an institution. If you just sort of throw in the Citizens Advice Bureau, people are going to more or less understand, you know, what you're talking about. That's where citizens go to find out information, and that—that's what this essentially is. 
uh, video cameras, have, surveillance cameras have also been set up at uh, checkpoints at the entrances to institutions in uh, spaces where for visitors and there are 84 such cameras. Getting tough, getting tough, I'm struggling. Can you feel for me? <laughs> Control no propos ni punct, okay, usually KPP, okay, it's usually a checkpoint, so, but because this is an entry point to an institution, to a prison, I guess it would be more an entry point, so I sort of do make that distinction. And then this, pavishinia kontrolorov pasvidanyam i prioma grajna. Okay, so again, they get, you get very specific with the, um, the job titles here of some of these people. So we've got the. Con so I'm going to just take you to the end of this paragraph because we're going to finish here and just give you a sort of general tip on how to address these. So just so I'm going to highlight them as we come to them. So look, this is the controllor pasvidanium i prioma grajdan. Okay, then play on. Been set up. And also uh, body cameras, 154 body cams have been issued to um, officials from the authorities for the de for the Department of Protection and Convoy. And they have received 24 such um, body ca body cameras. Okay, it's tough. Oh, it's tough that bit. Uh, so again. Okay, there's another job position. And a third one is this Nachalnikam Karaulov. <laughs> now, you can try and get the exact, you can try and come up with some bureaucratic sounding job position for these, uh, for these various officials. I looked up Nachalnik uh, Karaulov and it came up with something like the Chief of the Guards or something like that. Something completely strange that just would never come to you in the moment, okay? So what do you do about it? How do, how do you get across uh, this idea, again, at least generically? Okay, so in English, we, would probably, we probably wouldn't mention these specific uh, job titles, I think, in English. He'd probably just say something along the lines of senior officers, okay? Uh, or the duty officer, okay? Such in the Karaul, maybe that's... With that idea of karaul, it's like who's on the person, that the, the most senior person at the time during that shift, okay? So that would be the duty officer. So I would perhaps say uh, to senior officers, we've issued to senior officers these body cams, senior officers from the Departamenta Pochranje i Konvirovanje. Konvirovanje, that's an important word. That's escorting. So these are the guys that basically transport prisoners uh, inmates from one facility to another. That's something that's come up quite a few times. So know that, like Konviravanya is escorting. So in hindsight, how would I perhaps have done this, uh, these last couple of sentences a bit better? Or this last, yeah, okay. So maybe I would have said something along the lines of, we've also set up surveillance cameras at the entry points to these institutions. Uh, in the premises of the senior officers, 84, so 84 cameras, and we've issued to uh, senior officials at the institution, uh, this is an important idea, body cams, and the Grudnia Video Registratory. Okay, that, I've heard that, it's come up a lot, hasn't it? In, I know in the US, the need for these, the police to carry these body cams. Uh, and again, to senior officers for the department, of um, protection and escorting, we've issued them 24. So you just need to find something a bit generic that will basically help you, help sort of sauver les meubles, as they say in French. So yeah, that's a, it's a really, I was gonna say it's a fun statement to do, I wouldn't go that far, but it's really good practice and uh, lots of useful uh, vocabulary uh, to look at. So, uh, as I say, if you've um, give it a practice, read, read a bit of the cat first, the Convention Against Torture, try and do this statement, come and watch the show, see if I can give you uh, any useful tips. 
there's so many useful little expressions in this in in this um, in this text. You know, the idea of carrying criminal responsibility is criminally punishable. The idea of custodial sentences, corrections, penitentiary uh, institutions. Uh, what do we talk? We talk about eligible and the, the antonyms liable and eligible. We talked about statutes of limitations, out of court settlements, parole, cr investigative jurisdiction, proceedings for proizvodstvo as the sort of safest, the go to solution, most generic solution, unannounced visits, allegations, allegations of torture. The complainant or the plaintiff approach for a bratitsa to approach someone with whatever it may be. CCTV or so the idea of uh, surveillance. Senior officers, okay, uh, escorting for konvirovanya. Loads of interesting stuff just in the space of one, two, basically two and a half pages there. Guys, if you've uh, enjoyed the episode, if you've learned some uh, new stuff, uh, well, please put it in the comments. Please say if you've got any better ideas for some of the vocab that we've gone through, please do put it in the comments section uh, down below. If you've enjoyed it, give me a like, share, subscribe. Remember to subscribe if you're watching these videos. You're duty-bound to subscribe. If you're, if you're benefiting from them, please do. Please do uh, subscribe. And uh, hopefully this should serve a little, for, my, for my part as a sufficient um, self-evaluation um, watch delivery as well. That's another thing you can learn from my failings at times in the delivery is to try, even that when you're under pressure, try not to give it away. You know, try not to sigh, uh, try not to err and um too much because it leaves a, can leave a bad impression with the, li with the listener, okay? The listener might not feel as confident in what he's hearing as if you, as he might if you were just staying cool and calm. So that, for my part, is something that I need to, to watch out for. I just need to be more cool and calm and not get too flustered okay so guys it's been a pleasure as ever all that remains to be said is that episode 124 of the interpretation station stands adjourned the train is now leaving the interpretation station we hope you enjoyed what you're saying until next time.